Well, hello everybody and welcome back to the SNH 107 Learning Community and week six. Y'all, we are officially past the halfway point and we are coming into the last few weeks of your SNH 107 course. We are so excited for the work that you have put in thus far and we're even more excited that your end of term is just around the corner. So as always, your experience here at Southern New Hampshire University is important to us. It is our policy and practice to create an inclusive and accessible learning environment. If there are aspects of instruction or course design that present barriers to accessibility, please notify the Online Accessibility Center, the OAC, as soon as possible at 866-305-9430. You can also email them at oac at snhu.edu or visit the Online Accessibility Center website. As a reminder, the Online Accessibility Center team is here to help you get content in a way that works best for you. If you have questions about it, you're curious about it, please reach out to them and they can get all of your questions answered for your success. So a couple of reminders, just housekeeping items. Um, you guys know the drill by now that these webinars are offered in both an on-demand and live format through the term. Um, this is an academic space. This in Adobe Connect is an academic space. The learning community is an academic space and so is your classroom environment. So always be mindful of your conduct. And just a reminder, the webinars are not mandatory. There's no graded material in here. There's no extra credit points awarded, but I hope that you learn, have fun, and it really helps support your success as you work through your assignments from week to week. So this week's webinar, we are mostly going to focus on that upcoming final project that isn't due till week seven, that academic success plan. We talk about it a whole week early. That way you know what to expect, how to find everything you need, and can really do this assignment successfully. Because of that, some students are like, wait a minute, what about week six? I got questions. So I wanted to make sure I took a moment and just kind of went through the week six assignment because it can be a little confusing. First and foremost, you know you have a template just like you've done in previous weeks here in SNH 107. So you wanna open up that template for the module six assignment activity, okay? When you open that up, you are gonna see what looks like what's on my screen, okay? The very first thing I wanna make sure you know is that you are not using any of your mission statement or the three short-term SMART goals that you wrote for yourself back in week four. You're not doing anything with those. This is literally you opening up this template, reading this sample or fake student mission statement, and then you're going to read the sample feedback. So it was graded by a faculty member and they left this feedback and you're gonna make changes. So what you're doing again, nothing to do with what you did in week four with your own personal mission and goals. You are just opening up this template. You're gonna read. So for example, question one is revise the personal mission statement based on instructor feedback. So this student wrote, my mission statement is to, without a doubt, do great in every class I take so I can get my bachelor's degree. I want to work in business because it's rewarding. I hope to provide for my family and make the community better. Great stuff, right? But what did we learn when we're putting together our mission statements back a few weeks ago? It's missing a few things, right? So right underneath that, you're going to see what their faculty member said to them. So read through that. See what the student is missing. And then right underneath it, you're going to write a revised mission statement. So a fake mission statement. It might be very similar to yours, but you're not using your stuff. So that's what you're doing for the mission statement. And then you have three goals. So again, you're gonna have this student, this fit sample fake student, put the goal, I want to get straight A's. Again, awesome goal, but what did we learn about SMART goals? What is this student missing? Look and see what the faculty member said right underneath it. And then you're gonna rewrite that first goal. You're going to do that three times. You're going to have three different goals, three different sets of feedback, and you just want to make sure you rewrite them based off of what they were missing according to what's on the template, okay? Don't overthink it. Don't try to go way outside the box. Just look at the mission statement, see what the faculty member said was missing, rewrite it, and then do the same thing for all three goals. And then don't forget, there is a number five question. Somehow this one gets missed a lot. The number five question is it to identify some benefits of embracing and incorporating feedback in your writing. This week's six assignment is all about 
being able to take somebody else's perspective and feedback and making changes as necessary. So you just wanna write short paragraph, couple of complete sentences on what you think those benefits might be of embracing and incorporating feedback. That's the assignment for week six. If you get stuck, if you have questions, please be sure to reach out directly to your faculty for SNHU 107 because they can help work you through it. There's also a helpful focus video um, on the First Year Experience YouTube page. You can find the focus video link down here in the lower right-hand corner in the chat. Click on that, look for week six assignment, check your course announcements because your faculty are gonna have all kinds of helpful tips and tricks, okay? So that's week six. Now, let's talk about the final project, that academic success plan that is due for week seven. Like I said, we're talking about this project a whole week early. That way you know where to click, where to find it, what to do, and feel extra supported. I want to remind you that you have been working on pieces of this project all term long. And we're gonna go through an example of the project when we get done. This project is worth 250 points, which is a significant chunk of your overall grade for SNHU 107. So if you learn anything today, it's to make sure you submit it, okay? Because it can easily and quickly change your grade from good to not so good. And we want you to successfully pass this class. So make sure you're paying attention to due dates. Again, we're talking about this a whole week early. This project is not due until week seven. You can always start working on it a little bit ahead for your success. Now, like I mentioned, we've worked on this project all term long. So basically this final project is about connecting the dots. So think back to week two. Remember when we did that daily schedule and you thought about your interruptions to your schedule and things that happen? You're going to be doing something very similar in the final project. It's just all week versus one day. And I'll talk more about that when I go through it. You also in week four did that mission statement and short term goals, the three short term smart goals, right? You want to be sure that you understand what was missing, if you had any changes that were necessary, because in the project, you want to make sure those changes are made. You're not starting over, you're not writing new goals or a new mission statement, you are just revising your work based off of what your instructor graded you in week four. You have a template for this assignment, right? So make sure you know how to see what your faculty member thought of your work on those assignments. Trust the template and use your resources. This is where our wonderful guest, special guest today, comes into place. I want you all to welcome Allison Johnson. Allison is part of our SNHU academic support team, okay? She used to teach high school English in a rural town that didn't even have a traffic light. I love these fun facts that we get to share with y'all because who can identify with that? Like those small towns, she's been there, she knows it really well. She has been an academic advisor for online students, so she knows online students very well. She loves to work with students who have been out of school for a while. Where are you? Where are you? We know you're here. Um, she's a huge fan of stand-up comedy and has a collection of old comedy records. That's one of my favorite fun facts. But she's one of the many people, just like you've learned here at SNHU 107, that are here to help you. So how this is going to work is Allison and I want to make sure that you know how to find and fill out and complete the template for your final project, that academic success plan. But we also want to make sure you understand just all of the services that the academic support team can provide you. So we got a little bit of a Q&A session. And then when we get done, I will run through the example of the final project so you know how to find everything and get everything filled out for you. So first question for Allison, how do students access academic support? So this picture right here helps you see where you can find us in your SNU 107 class and, by the way, all of your other classes. The easiest way to find us is at that top menu right above the banner, um, right next to Shapiro Library where it says Academic Support. You'll click on that and that takes you right into our Academic Support area, which offers you a menu of support options that we can talk about in just a second. Actually, right now. Um, so once you get in, oh, go ahead. 
No, you're good. So one of the things we want to make sure is like Allison said, when you click on the academic support, it brings up this whole menu. So Allison is going to go through what all of these can do for y'all. So you really know what and who can support your success. So <clears throat> with this assignment, what you might be most interested in maybe is written feedback, which is the second one. So I'll uh, if you draw your eye to that second option right there, the written feedback comes back usually within 12 hours, but I always say give it at least a day because you want to be able to get the feedback and do something with the feedback. So you might upload your draft for written feedback. It has a form that you fill out. You let the person who's reviewing your work know what the assignment's about, what questions you have, what you might have be concerned about so they can really direct their feedback to help. So it gives you a second set of eyes on things. To the left of that is our 24-7 drop-in tutoring. So that is done through chat. There are some tutors who have voice chat capabilities, so you can talk to them, but it's mostly chat. So I want you to go in there thinking that you're going to be probably doing a chat. And so that's useful for those quick questions. Um, you know, maybe you're having a hard time getting something started or an instruction is confusing and you just want to kind of bounce some ideas off. This could be really good for when you're in math classes or, you know, other classes that have some content that has some tricky questions. Um, so that's the 24-7 option, and it is available 24-7. So if you're a late night person or an early morning person, that's going to be available to you at any time. To the right of that are our workshops, and we have some really fantastic workshops. So if you like the webinars, both on demand or live, all of these workshops are live. You can sign up for them, but then you also get a replay. We always encourage you to attend because the live experience is better. You can ask questions and get them answered in real time. Um, but if something happens and you're not able to attend, you'll get a replay of that session. We also, in the workshop space, have peer groups that, where you meet with an academic coach and fellow peers. We have drop-in sessions with peer tutors. Um, and we have a bunch of really cool things. So taking a look at what we have to offer over there, um, is a really good opportunity. On the bottom row, we have peer tutoring. So peer tutors are people who are, are succeeding in their classes right now. They are usually masters or upperclassmen students. So they have that content knowledge and have really been through the same experience you're going through. So they offer a lot of really great knowledge about your coursework. And so that option is really great for this class or any class where you maybe have some questions, you're not um, sure about the content, you're having a challenging uh, time with maybe one of the assignment <coughs> assignments and, and getting started or getting finished, um, or even just need somebody to brainstorm and look at some feedback so that you know how to go back and, uh, and talk to your instructor about it. The other option is academic coaching. That's my domain. I'm one of the academic coaches. And academic coaching is for more long-term support and connection. So if you, um, for example, are one of, one of my people, the people who haven't been back to school in quite some time, and you're feeling nervous about it, like maybe you need a skills refresher, or maybe you're having some, you realize you have some issues with time management, or some of the challenging aspects of being a student beyond even you know, the course material, some reading comprehension strategies, you just have those goals for yourself and you think you might benefit from meeting weekly or twice a week with somebody to work on those goals so that you can feel like you can conquer all of your classes, this is a really good option. You click on that button, you fill out a form, and then you get connected with one of the academic coaches and we create a plan with you. And then that frequently asked questions section is a really good wealth of knowledge about not just what academic support has, but you know some of those other questions about how to get your uh, get a hold of your advisor, the OAC, and and all of that. So that is our menu. Holy smokes, right, y'all? Like there's so many ways for you to have questions answered, get some extra support, and just really. We want to encourage you to lean into utilizing these resources that are available to you with a click of a button. You know, especially there's just so many things that can fit your schedule and can be used at your convenience. So we encourage you to explore them. And that written feedback 
um, that Allison will talk more about and we'll talk more about is just such a crucial service for you because it is so helpful as you work on your different writing assignments. So don't let the word written feedback or the title of the, the, the service kind of frighten you away because it's all about just helping you be your best writer that you can be. Um, Allison, as you think about the final project or even like just things that the students do with their, you know, writing assignments from week to week, is there any common mistakes that they should be aware of or tips or tricks for success as they work on these big assignments? Absolutely. This is an assignment that I, as a coach and the peer tutors and, and the people that do the written feedback, think about it as like written help, written love, um, guidance. Maybe that's a better way to think about it when you do the written feedback. Um, but the thing that we see a lot, because this and quite a few classes have things that are a template so that you kind of fill it out. And I think we naturally, when we see something that's a template or kind of like a worksheet, maybe don't fill in with as much detail as we would because we think of it like a form and we all have to fill out forms in life but in this case think of it more like um, a form that you're that's helping you kind of develop an essay so you want to have detail your instructor is not a mind reader they don't know what you mean unless you show it to them so you have to add complete sentences and detail. So if you if you make a statement, add a for example. Um, make sure you explain what you mean so that, you know, like you were talking to your instructor. Um, because without that detail, they really don't know where you're coming from sometimes. And so make sure you're writing in complete sentences. Make sure you double check the, the grammar and the spelling. Make sure you're adding detail. Another thing with templates is you want to double check that you filled everything out. I think that's one of the, the common mistakes that we see is, especially since you're kind of adding to and changing things and looking at the feedback, make sure that you save it um, so that you know what the most updated version is and double check before you submit it to make sure that you hit every single point and grade yourself at the end um, because you have a rubric and you've heard your instructor's voice and you know what they're looking for. So before you submit it, put your grading hat on, take that rubric out and grade yourself to see how you think you might have done. Such great advice, y'all. Such great advice because Allison's right. She hit a big thought that I want to expand upon just like right on the head is that often sometimes when we have the template assignments or there's a lot of text already on the document, it can be really easy for you all to just like think you answered something but miss something. So always go back and double check and it's great to have that extra set of eyes on it. Um, this is one of my favorite questions because where are my folks that like to procrastinate? Like you put things off. I mean, it is like a skill set, y'all. It's a skill set. Um, so I know sometimes that even our best laid plans can go awry. You know, maybe you get sick or kids get sick or, you know, something happens in your life that derails your schedule, you know, and all these plans just go out the window for you to get your project done, but you still get it done. It's just not as early as you wanted to. Allison, what is your advice for students? Um, if they procrastinate, how can they help make sure they're turning in the best product they can? So. Procrastination is a very uniquely human um, challenge and something that if you feel like mm, is a challenge that impacts you a lot, we will be having a workshop on this very subject. So it's something to look out for um, for later. But in the moment, what you can do um, if procrastination happens um, is while you may not be able to get the written feedback or get in uh, with a, a peer tutor, the 24-7 drop-in is there, so you can always try that out. Um, but you have yourself. You have your knowledge. You have the feedback from your instructor. And maybe you even have some people at home who can help. Um, something that can be really powerful in double-checking your assignments is to have somebody else read it aloud back to you. So they can, you can hear how somebody else is interpreting it. So get it done, make sure that you have somebody else read it back to you, or the computer does that for you. It has a read aloud feature. So you know, oftentimes if we're looking at something 
over and over again, just with our own eyes, we kind of miss some things. So having another human or having the computer read it aloud lets us know if we missed a, you know, a little spot of it. Um, and then, you know, just make sure that you get it done. Even if it's, you know, a little after the deadline, so what, you lose 10, you know, just a few points. Something is better than nothing um, is, is always the best motto to have. So just make sure you get it done and do your best with it. I 100% agree. Something is better than nothing, y'all. Work to get your assignment turned in because it is just going to help you add those points up at the very end. And you have worked so hard all term to have the end not go how you want it to go. So just a few really quick reminders before I actually go into the template for you is to know how you're graded. Remember to look at the rubric, understand the rubric. If you have questions on it, reach out to your instructor for SNH 107. Trust and use that academic success plan, you know, pop it open, go through it line by line. You can even print it off and fill it out and then go back and type it before you upload it. Don't forget to use your resources. Like Allison mentioned, you know, you have the entire SNHU academic support team and the services they offer, but you also have the learning community. This webinar, you can go back and watch videos. You can watch, you have your advisor, you have your instructor. And the biggest thing is we want you to be yourself when you go through this project and work on it. You know, really take time to think about you know, why you're putting this together, because a lot of students use this as kind of a roadmap for their success. Um, and it's they pull it out from time to time when they're struggling or they get overwhelmed and they think back to like, OK, what was the plan I had? What were the goals I had so I could stay on track? You know, how was my time being spent? Like, am I do I need to look at my time again and see where it's going and fix what needs to be fixed? So just remember to like utilize this, like don't just fill it out to fill it out, like really take the time to answer the questions because this is an assignment that really is just going to help you be successful, not only this term, but as you're moving forward in future classes. So really quick, I'm going to share um, my screen because I wanted to walk you guys through the final project example. Um, First, I wanted to show you where you can find everything. So when you log into your SNU 107 class, this is an old classroom, so don't pay attention to any of the dates and stuff in here. This is an old classroom. But when you click on that course menu and go to learning modules and you go to module seven, scroll through everything, you do have a non-graded discussion. So this is just a place where if you have questions about the project or questions on how to fill something out, you can go ahead and post in there, but don't put your actual project or academic success plan anywhere in here. You want to put it here, which is that 7-2 project submission, create an academic success plan. So click on that requirements and rubric, because what I wanted to show you really quick is it's going to go over the entire project line by line, step by step. So take the time and read through this as you're scrolling through. When you do that and you get to the bottom, you'll see the template, just like you've had other assignment templates that you click on, open, and download. If you don't have Office 365 yet, get it. You get it for free as an SNHU student. But you also have this SNHU 107 project example. You can click on that, and it looks like this. This is what I wanted to show you quickly today. You will see that this is an, a filled out, completed final project academic success plan. Now, I caution you, do not copy this word for word. Do not utilize pieces and parts of it. This is somebody else's work. However, this gives you a great foundation for you to understand how this should be filled out. So the very first part is the time log. Back in week two, you did one day. This is actually taking a look at your most general week. It doesn't, don't get overcomplicated. Just make sure that you have something in every single spot. You will notice this, this student listed when they're working, when they're at home with their child, when they're sleeping, when they're getting ready for work. You know, maybe they're having, you know, like working on assignments or watching TV, you know, just keep it simple. But the point of this time log and your time, your week may change from week to week. So use your most general time. Don't stress out about it. Just fill it in, make sure everything is filled in. The point of this is to look at this and really understand where your time is going. You might see that you're spending time in some spots or areas or with people that you might need to cut back on, or maybe you want to add to some things. So you could also put when you're sleeping, when you're you know, doing different stuff, just be honest. 
Um, that's the time log, fill it out completely. The second question is thinking about those um, potential unplanned scheduling interruptions again. So what are things that can interrupt your schedule? Much like playing on your phone, you know, scrolling social media, maybe getting called into work, maybe um, spending time with friends and family before your assignment is done. You know, all kinds of things come up. Just use a couple of examples, write in complete sentences if you can. These are examples. Um, question three is to identify how you'll choose between tasks or events that take place at the same time on your schedule. We all have this habit where like maybe you have a paper due for your class, but you also have like a family dinner and you got called into work. Or you had to work a little bit later than you thought. That's an example. Like how do you pick what is more important and what you're going to get done? You want to explain that. So you'll notice that this student explained what they thought. That is their thoughts. Gives you a great example of how you can complete that part too. Um, question number four is to identify the SNHU resources, social supports, and motivational factors that help you the most with managing your time. In this spot, you want to make sure you have two for each category. So you'll notice that this student didn't have two. So this project isn't perfect, but it's a great way to have an idea of how to fill this out. So just when you do, do your project, remember you want at least two SNHU resources. So those are people, places, departments, and things at the university. Social supports are outside of the university. So like, you know, your loved ones, friends, family, kids, and then motivational factors. Make sure you have two for each category so you don't miss points, okay? Question five is to explain how you'll take ownership of your future academic success by managing your time with those resources, social supports, and motivational factors. So basically you wanna write a small paragraph writing complete sentences, answering like how you're gonna use all those things to keep yourself on track for your courses. So be specific, look at the example, it gives you some great ideas, but just remember you wanna have your own words, okay? Part two is the mission and goals. So this is where you wrote a mission statement and three short-term goals in week four. You wanna make sure you go back to that assignment and look at it. If if you didn't miss any points, you got perfect scores, no revisions needed, you want to copy and paste your mission statement right here in number six, and then you want to go to number seven and make sure you copy and paste all three short-term SMART goals. Double check that you have a mission statement and three goals. As every term, I have a student or two that misses one of them, so don't do that. If you had changes, like maybe you needed to be more specific with your goals or you forgot a due date or a deadline or your mission statement was missing some things, your faculty member gave you that feedback when they graded week four. Take a look at it. If you can't find it, reach out to your instructor. What you want to do is if you had changes, is you want to make those changes and put them here. So, for example, when I'm grading this for my students, I pull up their week four assignment and see what changes I recommended or revisions I recommended. And I'm looking for that in this section for the final project, okay? Again, if you didn't have any changes, everything was good, just copy and paste your stuff over. If you had changes, make sure the revisions are made. Question eight is to describe the importance of setting goals on your academic journey. Why do you think goal setting is important? Give your thoughts, complete sentences, please. Number nine is again to identify SNHU resources, but different this time that you will use to help achieve your mission and goals. Okay, so this you might have overlapping similar resources you're going to use, but this is where you want to be specific. You'll notice they put SNHU Connect, which is the learning communities, their professor, and the Career Service Center. Um, identify academic skills and social supports to help you achieve your goals and mission statement. Academic skills, y'all, those are things like time management study skills, um, note-taking skills, communication skills, like that's what an academic skill is. Notice it's plural again, skills have at least two. And then social supports, remember, who are our social supports? People, places, and things outside the university. So friends, family, coworkers, colleagues, faith-based organizations, community organizations, things like that, okay? Have two for each one. Make sure you got that. Number 11, Identify motivational factors to help you achieve your goals and mission statement. So like list a couple of things, at least two, like what is going to keep you motivated or who is going to keep you motivated and why to help you achieve your mission and goals that you have written. All right. Very last question is just to explain how you're basically going to connect the dots of all of it. Like how are you going to be managing your time and take ownership of your academic success by using 
those resources you've talked about, the academic skills you've talked about, the social supports, and the motivational factors. Write that up, short paragraph, complete sentences, and then save it. Get it off to the um, written feedback writing services team. Um, look it over yourself, have somebody else read it over, and then get it uploaded. That is the project. Give me just a sec as this kind of resets itself here. But that's it, y'all. Like that is everything for the final project. So now you've learned where to find it, <laughs> how to fill it out, and how to submit it. But you've also learned about the incredible academic support team and all the resources they can help you with this term and this project but also moving forward. Again, you can go back and watch this webinar as many times as you need to. You can reach out to any of your university resources if you're stuck or have questions. Get this project turned in. It is one of the most favorite assignments that your faculty have because it's all about you and your plan for success. And it's just a great culmination of everything you have worked so hard for this term. So we're proud of you. Make sure you finish this term strong. Remember to reach out if you get stuck. Thank you so much, Allison, for being here with us tonight. And remember, you got this, folks. Have a wonderful week six. Good luck in week seven. And we'll see you 